My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. In the Bondo Basics video, I built a cell phone holder that I designed. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to finish and paint that thing so you get a fantastic finish for your mock-up. We're going to start with a good quality automotive primer. I'm using a Duplicolor primer that I got from the automotive supply store. Do not use Rust-Oleum. Again, don't ever use Rust-Oleum. You've been warned. Once we lay down the primer and it dries, after a few coats, we're going to go in here and we're going to fill in any little pinholes and imperfections that we can find. We mark them with a pencil and we're going to go move to our spot putty. I'm going to put this on with a little rubber squeegee. We're going to end up sanding off about 90% of all the spot putty we put on. You're going to see here shortly. If you've ever watched any of my previous videos, you know the rule. Sanding. Always use a sanding block. Always. So we're always using a sanding block here. I have some different ones. You may make, need to make special little sanding blocks. I use a foam roller pad here. I make them out of pink insulation foam, a piece of cork, anything that's flat, something that's nice and form fitting. Here I'm using a wooden stick that I have a piece of sandpaper wrapped around so I can get nice and tight on those inside surfaces. Most of the spot putty gets sanded off. We're coming back with some nice light coats of primer. I'm just lightly heating the surfaces, building up the primer. We have a few more imperfections to fill here and we're gonna do this a few more times. Back and forth, filling them every time with the spot putty until eventually there are none left. All right, we're gonna get back on it with the sanding block, of course. This keeps the surfaces nice and flat, and it's how you get quality A-class surface. You can't do it with your fingers. It'll never work. Here I'm using a round piece of PVC with my 220 wrapped around it, and that's what I'm starting these first layers with. I have a little piece of bondo that chipped off, so I take a little bit of glazing putty, and I make a new little corner. I make sure to remove the primer from the Bondo because the Bondo will not stick to the primer very well. You've been warned. I trim everything off in its rubbery state with a nice X-Acto blade and we're back for the next round of primer. When you're spraying your primer, you're laying down thin light coats. You're trying to build up the primer, not too heavy. You're only pressing the button as you approach the object. You let it go as you exit. You're not pressing the button the entire time like a cartoon character. Don't be an amateur. We're gonna do a little Bondo squeeze, something that we learned in the advanced Bondo video. I'm putting on a little bit of uh, polyester filler here onto a round uh, dowel PVC, and we're gonna put it into the side indent of the cell phone charger. And this is gonna give us a nice form and we're gonna use that to help us sand out and get a really nice surface. So it's certainly a lot easier to sand a convex shape than it is to sand a concave shape. Thus the little Bondo squeeze. We're gonna put on a little bit of sandpaper that we're going to spray mount onto it. I'm using probably a 220 grit, something like that. And I'm just going to rotate that in the concave space of the cell phone holder. And that's going to give us a really nice finished surface there. We're going to lay in some more primer here. Again, you're only spraying paint when your can is parallel to the surface that you're painting. A few light coats and we're back to sanding again using a sanding block, of course. At this point, I've probably switched to a 320 grit sandpaper, 400 it seems, because I'm starting to get a smoother and smoother finish every time as those imperfections, pinholes, and things are starting to disappear. We're back for another coat of primer. Again, light coat, 
so I get good surface and I don't get too much buildup. Now that I'm pretty much done sanding and priming, the last coat I'm gonna do in white, and this is gonna give me a lighter color surface. It's also a great time to test out your paint. And this is the raspberry color paint that I'm using. I'm testing it out on different subsurfaces, and I also happen to notice that this can spits a little bit. So I'm gonna make sure that I have a little bit of solvent to clean the nozzle so that when I go to lay my final paint down, I don't have any issues. You'll notice the tones on the right are a little bit darker because they have a dark substrate. So that's one of the reasons I'm going with a white substrate and my final coat of primer is white. So I get the color that I really want. It's subtle, but for me as a designer, it's super important. This last coat of white primer, I'm very lightly sanding it, of course, with a sanding block and 600 grit wet dry sandpaper. This is just to knock off any of the little surface roughness that may have occurred to get the surface really nice and baby smooth. So at this point, you have what's called a white model, a perfectly primed part that's ready for paint. So I apply, again, light coats of my paint. Here I'm using a Montana raspberry, very light coats. I am building up the color as I go. I'm doing the bottom first, and you'll notice I had a hole in there before. I wanna flip the part around. Again, light little coats. I'm only spraying when the can is parallel to the parts. Let's go ahead and flip the part over. I'm going to use my 16th inch uh, piece of piano wire here that I'm going to insert into the bottom of the cell phone holder. I have that little hole specially there for that. I'm going to put it onto my round turntable. Now I can paint the entire object with nice light coats of uniform color. I'm going to build these up. The first few layers are pretty light. I just want to get a base coat down. I'm going to come back with a second coat afterwards and give that whole thing a final uniform finish right here. Remember, when in doubt, read the instructions on the can, but nice light coats parallel to the surface of the object that you're painting. It's going to give you a fantastic finish. At this point, you could put any kind of top coat finish you wanted on. If you wanted glossy or a soft touch, I'm just going to leave it natural paint. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Rock on. Click here to watch some of the other design and making videos that I have. If you'd like to have your music featured in one of my videos, drop me a line.